I had a really good friend reach out to me asking if I could get his trimmer back up and running again because he finally moved into a place and wanted to start doing his own lawn again, at least until he finds someone to do it for him. Unfortunately, when I went to pick it up from him, I soon realized that I was going to regret agreeing to work on it, and this video will show you why. In today's video, we look at this Craftsman trimmer and the problem is that it won't start because the fuel lines are completely broken. It appears they left fuel in it years ago, which eventually destroyed the entire fuel system, so unfortunately, it means we need to completely service it. Now, I'm going to try and repair this trimmer, however, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have enough time to look into them, but if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. In the previous video, we had to try and fix the pull rope because it didn't always want to return back into the cover, which makes pulling it very difficult because it's an easy pull system. Unfortunately, it turns out there was a lot more wear on the system than expected. I did my best to fix it, and it works, but it's not perfect and it will eventually fail again. Until then, I'm going to fix the fuel system so it's going to work again, but since I've never seen this trimmer working, I need to confirm that it even starts and runs. The first thing I want to do is put some fuel into the filter area and see if it'll start and run for a second. As you can see, the rope still has its issues, but believe it or not, it's better than before I tried fixing it. At least we know it has the ability to run, which is all I needed to know so I can start the repair. For those of you who don't know, this engine is basically upside down from a typical trimmer where the fuel tank is on top while the spark plug is at the bottom. This may not sound like a big deal, but it makes the fuel system very unique and yet difficult to replace, and you'll see what I mean here in a bit. Looking at what's left of the fuel lines, the top fuel line passes through the cover and goes to the back of the purge bulb. The other line from the bulb will then go to the fuel tank. The line from the bottom of the carb will travel over the carb behind this plate, pass through the cover and back to the tank where this plastic washer goes. This is there to help keep the fuel filter from coming loose. Now this is the issue I have with this engine. It's the fuel filter and its location in the tank. The reason is because part of the filter has to pass through the tank which makes the job of replacing the line much more difficult and takes more time than if it were a typical design. As you can see on this particular tank, the openings for the fuel lines are different sizes to deal with the part of the filter that passes through it. Now the first thing I need to do is to remove all the old fuel lines and also release the bulb so I can replace it. Now I would have tried to rebuild the bulb, but when I released it, it flew into the grass, never to be seen again. If you need a bulb and can't find one, I have a link in the description to a variety pack that should have one you need for your machine. Once I got the screws loose for the carb, I realized it was stuck to the engine and it needed some persuasion to free it. There was also an extra cable from the machine that's part of the automatic choke system that I've never seen before. The first part I like to remove is the pumping section so I can inspect the inlet screen for debris. However, the pumping diaphragm and gasket were also securely stuck to the carb and also needed some persuasion to come loose. As you can see with the diaphragm gone, we can see the round inlet screen and luckily it's clean of absolutely no debris on it. This means the fuel filter did its job in keeping debris from making its way into the fuel system. Next, I want to remove the plate covering the metering diaphragm which more than likely is going to be in rough shape and will need to be replaced. So here's the metering diaphragm and its job is to control fuel flow through the carb. It's supposed to be flexible but unfortunately this one is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's somewhat stiff and also has some wrinkles on it around the edges which can affect the way it works. That means we need to remove it and replace it. Before I replace the diaphragm, I need to confirm that fuel will flow through the inlet screen. The way I test for this is to put fuel on the screen and then press the rocker arm on the other side and wait for the fuel to disappear through the screen. If it does, then I'll replace the diaphragm, but if it doesn't, I'll have to clean the screen. Unfortunately, it didn't pass through the screen, so I'm going to try and clean the screen by leaving the fuel in the pocket and then carefully agitating it. But after a minute of doing this, it still didn't pass through it, so I'll have to do it properly and remove the needle and rocker arm so I can safely use carb cleaner on it. Now, this is the most dangerous part about this repair. It's so easy to lose these tiny parts. I would suggest that you do this part in a place where you can find the parts if you do drop any one of them. But to be honest, if you do lose any one of these parts, I would just buy a new carb instead. 
After spraying some carb cleaner into the pocket for the screen a few times, the cleaner is now easily passing through the screen, which is great news. To further test it, I'm going to put some fuel on it again and see if it'll pass through it like the cleaner was doing. As you can see, it is, and that means I can start to put this carb back together again. If for some reason you don't want to risk losing parts or would like to make this repair a little bit easier, I would just replace the carb instead. After installing the rocker arm, press on it a few times to make sure it's working like it's supposed to, otherwise you'll have to reinstall it again. Also when replacing the metering diaphragm, the most important part is the stem in the middle. The stems can either be short or long, and this one happens to be the longer one. When choosing my diaphragms, I'm only looking at the pictures the seller has put up, and if I can't tell if the stem is long or short, I'll send them a message asking to check. Now, after removing the old fuel lines, I noticed they had put a plastic splice in the line, so I'm going to reuse it as well, but if yours didn't come with one, it's okay, you don't really need it. Now, after dumping the fuel tank out, I was able to get the fuel filter out, but it's covered in old two-stroke oil, so I want to try and clean it, that way I can reuse it. I'm not sure if it's needed, but this would be a great time to clean it versus when it's installed inside the tank. Now once I think it's clean enough, I'll then start to install the new fuel lines. The lines I'm using is sized at 3 16 of an inch, except for the fuel filter, which will be a bit smaller. That's to make up for the stem on the filter, which will have to pass through the tank along with the fuel line. Now it doesn't matter which opening you choose to make the return or the filter line, but I would recommend running the return line in the opening towards the front, and that's because it'll make it easier to install the filter in the rear opening. I also like to leave about an inch of return line inside the tank, that way it's unlikely to fall out. I think the short piece of fuel line I'm using for the filter might also be 3 16 of an inch, but the material it's made of is a bit thinner than the other line I'm using. This is to make installing the filter a bit easier. Now I do apologize, but I'm going to edit this to make it look a lot easier than it actually was, but there was some struggling going on to get the filter to pass through the tank. After pushing the stem of the filter through the tank, I'll then install the plastic washer that was on there before. This piece is supposed to keep the filter and fuel line from coming loose. If it did come loose, there would be a massive fuel leak and could easily cause a fire. I'll then install the plastic splice and then use the regular fuel line to pass through the cover and then cut the line where the carb will be. I'll then run the rest of the fuel lines to the bulb area and then pass them through the rear cover. The biggest issue with running these lines is making sure that all the lines go to the correct port. If you mix them up, the engine will more than likely not start. The return line from the tank will connect to the longer port on the bulb. That means the short port will connect to the line that will eventually connect to the top port on the carb. After the lines have been connected, I can then seat the bulb in the cover. The fuel filter line will then run across the top of the carb and connect to the port on the bottom of the carb. Do not try and run it under the carb because it could get in the way of the extra cable. The last fuel line that was connected to the short port on the bulb will then connect to the brass port on top of the carb. Then we can connect the extra cable to the choke arm and then fasten the carb to the engine. Now the fuel filter line was a bit long, so I'm going to cut it to length and then reconnect it. Before I replace the rear engine cover, I'm going to put some fuel into the tank so I can confirm the fuel flow through the lines. If the fuel isn't flowing the way it's supposed to through the lines, the engine is very unlikely to start. So when pressing the bulb, fuel will flow through the filter line and work its way to the bottom port on the carb. Once it's filled the carb, it will then come out the top port and make its way to the bulb, fill the bulb, and then out of the bulb, out of the longer port, and work its way back to the tank. As you can see, the fuel is flowing through the lines just like it's supposed to. If yours isn't, check that the lines were connected correctly and change them if needed. Now, just in case I need to adjust the carb, I'm going to use a single D-carb tool to be able to turn the adjusting screws. These are very affordable and can be easily found online if you need some of these. Now the fuel adjustment screws are on top of the carb. The L screw is closer to the engine and is for adjusting fuel at idle speed or when initially squeezing the trigger. Now the H screw is further away from the engine and is for adjusting fuel while the trigger is fully squeezed. We may not need to adjust the fuel, however we may need to adjust the idle speed and to do that all we need is a Phillips screwdriver.
Luckily, it seems to be running very well, so I'm not going to make any adjustments, at least until I do another start after it cools down. I only needed to make some adjustments to the idle speed, but otherwise, I'm happy with how it's running. The last thing I need to do is put the rear cover back on, which of course also has the air filter in it as well. To be honest, the fuel lines aren't that hard to do, but this one requires more patience and a little more experience doesn't hurt either. If you're unwilling to put this much time into this repair, I would consider letting someone with more experience do the repair instead. So in the end, we were able to fix the recoil and get the fuel system serviced so now it starts and runs like it's supposed to. To prevent this situation from happening again, I would run the trimmer until it runs out of fuel. Now if you plan on keeping fuel in it, it means you'll have to start it once in a while and keep an eye on it, which most people are unwilling to do. Another reason why the fuel lines ended up breaking is because of the wrong type of fuel that was being used in it. I won't go into specifics, but certain fuels should not be used in small engines, and I believe that might have been the situation here. So my question is, after seeing how much fun it was to redo the fuel lines on this trimmer, would you care to have a trimmer that looks like this one, where the fuel tank is on top and the spark plug is on the bottom? I don't think I have to tell you what my answer is. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.